At a distance of 8.6 light years, the Sirius system contains two of the eight nearest stars to the Sun. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we're going to be looking more closely at the brightest star of our local area. Could we send a mission there? So, let's get to it. One of my first videos, we examined Sirius and Procyon in detail, and it was so successful that I thought it was worthwhile making another video. This time we're going to focus solely on Sirius itself. Sirius appears to twinkle and flicker more than any other star. This is because its brightness exaggerates atmospheric effects. In the northern hemisphere, Sirius is lower in the sky, where the atmosphere is at its thickest. We also know that Sirius is not just one star, but two. Sirius A is a huge A-class star over two solar masses that shines 25 times brighter than our Sun. Its nickname, the Dog Star, is given because its position is Alpha Canis Minoris. Sirius B, its companion, is known as the Pup and is a small, cooling white dwarf star. Both stars are orbiting around each other, and their orbit varies between 8.2 and 31.5 astronomical units every 50 years. If we look through a telescope at closest approach, it's very difficult to distinguish the white dwarf from its more luminous companion. But using the help of the Hubble Space Telescope, astronomers have determined that Sirius B has nearly the diameter of the Earth, some 12,000 kilometers, yet it has a mass of 1.02 times the Sun and this makes it in the top 5 most massive stars in our local area, despite its tiny, tiny frame. However, some orbital irregularities within the Sirius system have also been observed, and it's a bit of an astronomical myth that perhaps there is a third small companion star. It has never been confirmed, but a 1995 study concluded that a companion likely exists, possibly with a mass roughly of 0.05 solar masses, which would make it to a very small red dwarf or even a large brown dwarf. A theoretical star would have an apparent magnitude of over 15 and a distance of less than 3 arc seconds from Sirius A. If we use our imaginations, we can go back before the pup blew itself apart and when it would likely have been an A-class main sequence star just like its current companion. I often find this strange that when we have a stellar remnant, be it a white dwarf, neutron star or black hole, that once upon a time the system would have looked and felt very different indeed. At one point, Sirius B may well have been the larger of the two stars and it would have been quite an impressive system, but in a strange twist of fate, we may not yet have seen the end of the pup's explosive days. When Sirius A eventually begins to expand into a red giant star and moves off the main sequence, it will be so large that in our own solar system it could well encompass Mars, but it will become a feeding ground for the pup. As the dog star expels its outer shells, the white dwarf will suck some of this mass inwards. It could then theoretically just push it past the Chandra Sekai limit that's now accepted to be approximately 1.4 times the mass of the Sun, a mean an explosion of a Type 1 supernova. It remains unlikely, but not out of the question. In our local area, we have to travel quite a long way to encounter a significantly larger star than Sirius. Vega at 25 lights is only slightly more massive, and it may surprise you to know that both Arcturus and Pollux, the closest giant stars, are less massive than Sirius A. In fact, it's not until we reach 51 light years away in the Castor system that we find stars that are actually substantially more massive than Sirius. So Sirius, 8.6 light years and 81 trillion kilometers distance, is a long way away, but it truly is the major star in our local stars. We're so lucky to be close to it. Before we continue, if you're enjoying the content of these videos, you can always use the Buy Me A Coffee link. It helps with the channel of upkeep and I hope one day to make enough money to be able to buy a better PC and microphone, as well as being able to focus more in detail in the future videos. Given that what we talk about, it does stand to reason that we could contemplate sending a mission to Sirius. Now, there is not any plans for this mission at this point, and this mission is purely for our own curiosity. At present, the Sirius system doesn't have any known planets, but there are several ways in which we could reach Sirius. Let's talk about them. A near light speed nano spacecraft could be possible within the near future. Indeed, Michio Kaku suggested that these clouds of smart dust could be sent to nearby stars. Researchers at the University of Michigan are developing thrusters that use nanoparticles as propellant. Their technology is called Nanoparticle Field Extraction Thruster, or NanoFET. These devices act like small particle accelerators, shooting conductive nanoparticles out into space and providing thrust. There are also slower crewed mission possibilities, although I'm not sure Sirius would be the ideal target. The arrangement of a slow interstellar journey presents a major obstacle in existing concepts of dealing with a problem. One possibility is a generational ship, a type of interstellar arc, where the craft arrives at destination, 
it is crewed only by descendants from those who started the original journey. Generation ships are not currently feasible because of the difficulty of constructing such a ship of the enormous required scale and the great biological and sociological problems of life aboard such a ship raises. In essence, as well, we would also be condemning our children and perhaps their children to a life on board a ship with no possibility of ever experiencing the home world of Earth or anything like it, to live out their entire lives on board a starship. It seems a little unfair thing to do to your own offspring to me. Of course, we could postulate techniques for suspended animation, hibernation and cryonic preservation, but none of this has been possible at present. Sleeper ships offer the possibility which passengers lie dormant for the long voyage duration, but again, as yet, the technology has not reached this point. So of course, faster crewed missions would be better ideal. If a spaceship averaged 10% of light speed, it would be enough to reach Sirius in 80 years. And indeed, several propulsion methods have been put forward for this, but none are ready for near-term development. So this presents a problem with reaching the dog star. I often think that the universe contains a great irony, and that it has so much beauty in so many interesting places. But the problem is, its speed limit is just too slow and we may never be able to visit any of these places. However, it's not totally true. In an older video, Tau Ceti Could We Make It In A Day, we looked at the possibility of time dilation. Now this is very far in the future of course, but let's actually have a look at possibilities. If we could create crafts fast enough, our travellers would experience only a fraction of the time those on Earth would experience. So, let's focus on how much time dilation we could reasonably expect to see. We see here at 0.01% of light speed, time dilation barely registers and the journey time for those on Earth would be almost exactly the same as those experienced on the ship, so we need to go faster. As we can see, moving down the list, we would have to push up into the top echelons of relative speed. This becomes more and more difficult, but at 90% of light speed, time dilation enables the trip to be done in just 4.18 years for those on board with a relatively short trip bearing in mind that we're currently considering Mars missions that don't have a possibility of return for two years. But look how interesting it becomes later. The closer to light speed we reach, the graph is exponential and so the journey time on board the ship becomes increasingly less. Once we reach almost light speed itself, at 99.9995% of light speed, it would take us just one day to reach Sirius. Now of course I've no idea how much mass would actually be required to push a ship to these kinds of speeds and it may well prove to be completely impossible, but it's certainly interesting on the left. A journey time of 4.5 months to Sirius doesn't seem an unreasonable time, or indeed anything below 5 years. It means that the journey could be completed, for at least those on board, without hugely denting their lifetimes. In 1779, Edmund Halley discovered the proper motion of stars by using photographs, and he found that Sirius had progressed 30 arc minutes to the southwest, and other bright stars like Aldebaran and Arcturus also seemed to move much faster than other stars that seemed to be fixed. Indeed, Sirius itself is actually moving towards our planet, if only slightly. It will reach its closest approach in around the year 67,000, before slowly making its way back into eternity and the void. In 1698, Christian Huygens estimated the distance of Sirius to be just 0.43 light years. Unfortunately, he was wrong, and maybe if Sirius were so close to us, the distance wouldn't seem quite so great. The Voyager probe, for example, could have reached the star in less than 9,000 years. Of course, 9,000 years, let's face it, is still quite a long time, isn't it? Ultimately, and unfortunately, I think then we can rule out a trip to Sirius for now but it remains a large possibility that it will actually be the first star after the sun we reach. Many believe that's currently to be Proxima Centauri, but the Breakthrough Starshot mission has proven that if we send smaller probes towards stars, particularly stars that are more powerful, we can use those stars to slow down our probes and indeed insert them into orbit. In this next list we see that although Proxima Centauri is the nearest and the flyby mission would get there fastest, to actually insert probes into orbit around Proxima would take twice as long as going to Sirius. So we're considering an orbital insertion. By far and away the outstanding candidate for the Breakthrough Starshot mission is Sirius. Don't forget to check out the Breakthrough Starshot update video that we recently made for more details. I'll link it in the card above. Sirius the dog star remains prominent in our future. A true giant of our local area, Sirius is the brightest star other than the sun in our skies. Its beautiful twinkling elegant white colour is truly a wonder. Maybe one day we'll get to explore this system, slow down and spend time in orbit. 
Perhaps one day we'll find that there is a third star and sister, studying the evolution of where it came from and where Sirius will end its days. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and add a like because it does help the channel grow. Take care of yourselves, make sure that you look after your family and friends. I greatly appreciate anybody that comments below, and if you have anything to say or indeed any other ideas for future videos, don't forget to let me know. Again, take care of each other, and I'll see you on the next one.